It's Pipes Drums, and we're back for part two of our panel on teaching older pipers, uh, new players, existing players, uh, who are maybe older than the age of 18, certainly, you know, going up there all the way to, to however uh, old they might be. Uh, so uh, we have, again, uh, Margaret Dunn from Glasgow, Yuri Chisholm from Seattle, and Andrew Douglas from New York joining us. So thanks again, everyone, for, for taking the time. So we, we last time we talked about perceptions. Um, what about the treatment of uh, older players? You know, by let's call us the call this side of piping the, the competition oriented side versus the kind of performance only side. Andrew, do you see uh, are, are older players treated differently if they just want to uh, perform rather than than compete? Yeah, it's definitely an interesting question. And <clears throat> I suppose it depends on the venue. Now, I can remember instances sort of observing in certain environments where it was kind of seen maybe as a bit of a burden to be teaching the non-competition focused players, which of course, uh, you know, were typically maybe older players that were just kind of in it for the passion and the hobby of it rather than for the competition. I think I see less of that now though. I, I think it's definitely uh, maybe if anything, I think you see teachers kind of working with soloists to help them just extract a little bit more of the, you know, of the fun out of things and to keep things interesting. Uh, and yeah, I see that crossing over and, and I haven't really sensed that lately, although, you know, uh, that's sort of we're heavily focused on teaching adults here in our community. So, uh, you know, maybe it's still there, but I think it's lessening. I'd be curious to hear what others think about that. Yeah. Yori, um, your thoughts. Yeah. So in my experience, you know, full-time bagpipe teacher, um, teaching online, teaching in person, teaching bands, doing workshops. To me, it's been a very welcoming environment for players of all ages. Um, I think what can happen is if you do, grow up in the competition realm and you're competing at this at the high level like the the four of us do or, or have in the past you can kind of get tunnel vision that that's the only way and certainly in my teaching career it's been evolution to sort of broaden my uh, appreciation for the different ways that people can enjoy playing bagpipes and um i think what you see you know i was just at in uh, at uh, winter storm in Kansas City, and I think that you see that you know these this faculty of the world class judges and instructors. It's a very welcoming, it's a very supportive and encouraging environment, and maybe it's a bit of a self selecting population there. The the people that are just don't want to be part of that, they're not part of it, and they can go and they can do their competition thing and stay focused on their sort of the elite sort of. Uh, section of piping, but certainly the instructors who are there, who are the very some of the very best pipers and drummers in the world, are there because they want to share what they've learned, and you know you have a wide cross section of of students there, ages and ability levels. Yeah, Margaret, um, you know the National Piping Center uh, twenty odd years ago opened its doors. Um, what have you seen? I think there's always been a lot of adult um, learners at the piping center. Most uh, instructors work nine to five, so it's not full of kids all day. Um, there are a, a high number of, of adult learners and uh, players as well. But I think working with an adult, um, you've got a blank canvas, really. It's as Yuri was saying about this tunnel vision, we can all get very wrapped up in competition, you know, open in Verness. Well, the World Pipe Band Championships, you know, it's that's one part of of piping for a select number of pipers and drummers. But there's just so much more to it. And uh, having a piper that knows nothing about that or someone learning for the first time, you know, you can obviously you'll you'll mention it and introduce them to that. But there's just so much other um experiences they can have then maybe would prefer to go down maybe do piping and drumming qualification examinations or h and c h and d program um you know they can go down really 
maybe the traditional route, maybe play small pipes, you know, but um, it's um, it's it's much much broader, I think, than um, competitive solo or band piping. Yeah, we can't help but uh, notice that. I mean, the piping center itself is uh, run by pretty much a non-competing piper in Finley McDonald. Uh, so that ethic, uh, it makes sense that it kind of trickles down a bit. Uh, so it's not competition's not the be all and end all, perhaps. Um, okay, let's uh, final sort of topic um, advice for older older pipers. Uh, we'll we'll start off with Yori. Uh, we'll ask each of you what your advice is, but Yori. Uh, what would you say to older pipers at, at uh, starting the instrument and 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 pursuing the instrument at an older age? I think it's really important that you get high quality instruction from a source that you can trust. The internet is amazing in so many ways, but there's a lot of stuff out there. So, I think what I try to do when I'm learn trying to learn about other things is try to focus in and find some sources that you can trust. Um, you can't do it on your own. So you need to, you know, you need to get a teacher. And sometimes that's in your local pipe band, or it can be one of these great world-class instructors who are teaching online. But I think it's for any age, but especially as an adult, you know, your time is limited and your time is important. So I would say make the investment in getting a good instructor with high quality information you can trust and ignore the noise. You know, there's a lot of groups out there. There's a lot of Facebook groups. There's a lot of forums. There's a lot of people pontificating and, and putting themselves up as knowledgeable. I would just say, be careful with that. And I, I get it when you're a beginner, it's hard to sort of parse that all out, but ask around, find somebody you can trust. And the other thing I would say is, um, there are a lot of great tools out there. In addition to getting good instruction, there are a lot of great tools that you can use in terms of pieces of technology that are just going to make your pipes sound great, stay in tune, be easier to play. Go for all that stuff, right? Don't get stuck in this like traditionalist mindset that, oh, this is the way it used to be, that this is a better way. All the great pipers at the highest level are using all the new stuff these days, and it just makes it so much easier to play so you can focus on enjoying the music and not battling your your instrument. And Andrew, your thoughts about uh, pieces of advice for older players? Well, I certainly agree with everything you already just said. <clears throat> he, he took all the good ideas. No, just kidding. But I will, uh, I think one of the things I would add in is, um, uh, especially for, you know, adult learners, I feel like uh, to focus on enjoying the process and enjoying the journey as opposed to becoming fixated on some sort of destination. Uh, so just really try to enjoy the journey and just, you know, uh, enjoy each day of it as opposed to setting some sort of goal for yourself or, or, um, or perhaps in the other direction, you know, resting on things that you've already achieved, just kind of like, you know, uh, stay in tune with the passion of it. And and then to Yori's point, yeah, block out all the other stuff, you know, stay, stay focused on, on the why of it all. And, and the fact that uh, it's something that really piqued your interest and something that really sparks your passions because it's easy to get bogged down, right. in in other aspects of it, as Yori was pointing out. And Margaret, uh, we'll leave the last piece of advice, pieces of advice to you. Anything to add? <laughs> I think it's all been covered so obviously um, finding a good instructor and also finding one that works for you so not every instructor might be the right fit for the student so that's important just finding someone that motivates you and that um, you you get along well with um, also I think just to be patient sometimes as an adult we sometimes we're not uh, patient of course you can also be like that as a child but I think allowing the natural um, momentum to come in technique and in putting the technique into tunes just be very very patient with that process because if you try to run before you can walk with these types of fundamentals it's going to break down and it's you have to, you, you you might feel like you're taking two steps forward but you're having to go back and fix it all again so just try to do daily 
technique practice, I would say, very important for adult learners and just be be patient, work it into tunes. Don't try to play too quick, too soon. Well, it's been a uh, fantastic uh, discussion. Really appreciate your expertise and the time that you've taken uh, to share with Pipestrom's readers and viewers some thoughts about uh, playing older, uh, playing as we age, uh, beginners uh, starting at a, a later age. So thanks again, and stay tuned for more panel interviews uh, from Pipestrom's. Thank <laughs> you.